to share with you some lessons learned from this beautiful Ingwe piece. First, we come to recognize Ingwe's frequent use of free time. Free time is where we have no particular time signature or tempo. Ingwe has taken this piece, Adagio in G minor, and arranged it for keyboard and guitar and in free time. Given the nature of this piece being in free time, if you'd like to play this piece, you can't really play it to a backing track. Uh, believe me, I tried once and it just doesn't work out. You'll never know when to change notes, when to uh, play to the accompaniment. It's far too difficult. So with that being the case, I think this piece is best experienced live. Now, I know that that's difficult to do these days. Now, this brings up the topic of rehearsal. After all, you're going to have to rehearse this piece. This is a pretty easy piece for the keyboardist. However, you do have an important job. You're going to have to let the guitarist take the lead and follow along. With that in mind, you're going to need to use your visual communication to communicate with your guitarist to know when he's going to be changing notes, when you're going to need to change chords. Now, the rehearsal setting is really a great time to be able to experiment with this piece and to be able to make mistakes. But along the way, you'll be building chemistry with your guitarist and to know kind of their, their tendencies and how they like to interpret the piece. When it comes to playing the piece live, this is really a great chance to, if you do mess up, be able to build a skill of being able to get back to where you need to be and be comfortable with making mistakes and getting, getting back as you, as you have to do in a live setting. So I hope you'll be able to experience this piece. It is my personal favorite Ingve piece and it's not too hard to play on guitar. You can always change some of the leads to make them easier to play and still get a great sense of the melody and the overall feel of the piece. So I really hope you'll be able to experience this piece, be able to appreciate Ingve's use of free time. This isn't the only piece that Ingve uses free time in. It's a pretty common trope of his, and to be able to incorporate that sense of freedom into your playing into a live setting can really add a lot of dynamic to your playing. So I really hope you'll get out there and experience free time for yourselves and really add a, a real dimension to your arsenal. Hey guys, so as the guitarist in this particular song, I'm actually in control of the melody and therefore I control the overall flow and direction of the song since there is no time signature. Since I'm in control of the melody, I think that's what makes this piece so fun to play live especially because I'm free to interpret it the way I'd like. I can speed up, I can slow down, or I can really focus on playing it the way I feel it and see it in my head. Now one tip in particular that I'll share with you guys, especially when it comes to interpreting this piece in particular, is to really bring out all that sadness and emotion that's in this melody. I think you can achieve this by really focusing on keeping the melody original and really letting those notes sing as much as possible to bring out all that sadness and emotion that's in this song. 
Another tip I want to share with you guys, especially when it comes to playing with other musicians, is really establishing the importance of creating a nice flow, especially since we are in control of the melody. It's important to have a, a nice flow to our interpretation that the other musician can follow so that we can all play together and sound coherent and, and together. This is really an awesome example of free time. And I think studying a piece like this and playing it accurately and together with another musician can certainly teach us a lot of lessons about playing live with somebody else. Anyway, that's it for today, guys. If you liked the video, leave a like, subscribe, and we'll see you in the next video.